takes us into the modern era, 1998 to now. Uh, 1998, obviously, that's the first year of Frank Solich taking over. It's also the first time you're going to start to see gaps here where we aren't playing games. And so we don't play in 98 or 99. Then we go back and forth, uh, 2000, 2001, another gap, and then there's some games in here. But And then the long gap here until last season where we aren't in the same conference anymore. So truly the modern era is the, is a new era with Oklahoma. Um, you know, Mike, let's, let's start to, to talk about that. We Oklahoma hires Bob Stoops in 1999. And as we mentioned earlier, I mean, it was a bad decade for them from, you know, basically, you know, Switzer leaves in 88 up until 99, that was a rough stretch for Oklahoma and Stoops comes in and pretty much, I mean, first year, uh, you know, I think went like, seven and five or something like that. But by the yeah, second, yeah. by the second year, they're winning the national title, which is just insane. Uh, some good talent, uh, obviously that John Blake left him, but also they went out into the transfer or into the, you know, Juco's and brought in oh, uh, Marshall and I think Hypo, they came in there. So they brought in some of the guys too, to, to make that 2000 team work. But uh, um, what are your memories there? Let's, let's focus on the 2000 and 2001 era of, of this series. Okay, because I was going to say there are two things in the, in the era that we're talking about, two things that come to mind for me. One is the 2001 game, um, which which I consider kind of the beginning of the end for Nebraska, of consistently being in the national conversation. You know, Nebraska, uh, uh, black 41 flash reverse pass. Here, I'm going to play it. So now here are the Huskers at the 36-yard line. First down and 10 to go. Here's a handoff to Thunder who gives it back to Mike Stunts. He's going to throw it. He's got a man out yes. there. 40. It is. Mike Crouch. 15, 10, 5, oh, yes. 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 <laughs> you know it's good when you can't even hear what the announcers are saying yeah. anymore because they're just yeah. screaming. <laughs> Yeah, and then Oklahoma had run that play earlier in the game. Yeah, they didn't work out well. And were, well um, were you in the press box at that during that play then? Yeah. So well, yeah. I mean, I know there's decorum, and you're not supposed. You know, there's no. I mean, do you? It, I, are people I don't, making noise? I don't know. I don't. I mean, I I've really, um, I don't wear red very much, and I mm -hmm. don't. Um, I, like I said, it's to some degree, it's the games are, you know, sort of. Dressing, it, it's the people that, that have kept me involved in this stuff. That's what I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. um, so you're more but, disciplined than uh, I am. Yeah, that was quite scenario. the play, you know, which made sense. Stunts was a quarterback. He was recruited as quarterback, and he was playing split end. He could do that. And, and uh, um, you know, it, we didn't even talk about in 79 when Nebraska first ran the, the fumble rooski, ran it twice, and Randy Schleusner scored a touchdown, and, John Havacost uh, picked up a first down, I think, on that uh, run in the uh, Bumaruski against Oklahoma in the Oklahoma game. They lost that game. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, but that black 41 flash reverse pass uh, <laughs> was what I remember about this era. Uh, mm -hmm. and probably. Uh, and then the uh, 2004 game, which whenever you want to talk about that, that's the <laughs> other one I remember. Well, yeah. Well, I, what, one thing about the 2000 game, because that was a big win for Oklahoma to get yes. against us. That that really gave them uh, the momentum. That oh, I was gonna... at that game. In a, in oh, you were. Oh, yeah. yeah. Started Rattles so well. number oh, one, yeah. right? We, one yeah. versus three. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and we Nebraska... started off 14 to nothing, and everything was going great. And then... Nebraska yeah. couldn't do anything nope. wrong going up to 14 nothing. I remember Davison had a long catch. And then they, I think they kicked us down to our end zone, and we did like a fullback dive to Willie Miller, and he went for like 60 yards. Mm -hmm. It was just like everything was working. And then just on a. It just just a flip of a switch. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Oklahoma yeah. just went. went yeah, what was thirty-one to fourteen? Was it? Oh, yeah, 30? yeah, yeah. They, yeah, we didn't score again. Nope, nope. But, but so yeah, you're you're right. We split those two games. Then, we're, then we're off for two seasons, and then it's two thousand four. And now a lot has changed in Lincoln. Frank Solich is no longer our coach. Steve Pearson made the decision to go with Callahan, and and we go down to to Norman, and uh, we had Glenn. Snodgrass, the head football coach at York, on a couple weeks ago. Oh yeah, and, uh, I and, I, and he's from uh, he's from Scotia originally, and so I was just talking to him about Scotia. And the the player I remember there is Steve Crewald, the fullback. And Crewald, you know, in in two thousand four, um, 
we pretty much aren't using the fullback anymore like we would have in, in the olden days. And this was the this was the the year where Steve is really gonna you know have his season and he just doesn't get it because the the, the scheme isn't for him. But at the end of that game, we were down 31 or 30 to nothing, I think. Had done nothing. nothing. Yeah, had done nothing the whole game. And so mm-hmm. they just basically hand a fullback dive off just to try to run the clock out. And of course he goes for like 60 yards and gets us into a you know field goal position. But but heaven forbid we run the damn fullback again. We can't do that, you know. But, yeah, but we they ran out. Corey Ross carried like 30 times. They, I think that Bill was trying to incapacitate Corey Ross. He carried 30 <laughs> times for 130 yards. They just pounded this guy, you know, and they're getting beat 30 to nothing. And they get on this last drive, and Crewald carries twice on the drive. Mm-hmm. And the last play of the game, David Dykes kicks a field goal to make it 30 to 3. And, you know, Oklahoma fans are throwing oranges on the field. <laughs> um, and before the game happened was when Darren DeLone ran into one of the roughnecks and knocked some teeth out. Oh, geez. Um, oh, yep. Yep. And uh, after the game, you know, we're doing the post-game interview and Bill Callahan, you know, somebody said, what was the game plan? And I was like, to win, you bet. You know, it's like, <laughs> that, was it. that was their game plan, to win, you bet. And... Uh, and then he said something about then they were throwing fruit on the field and <laughs> whatever. It was just a disaster. But yeah, Crewald carries twice on this last drive, <laughs> so they can set up to kick a field goal. So they can kick a field goal. So they we don't get, get shut, shut out. out. Know, yeah. Two thousand five, we lose to him. Oh. Two thousand six, we play him for a third straight year, but that's because we we got them in the. Uh, the coldest game. Oh God! <laughs> Arrow, you were at that. I was Arrow, at that too. Yeah, Arrowhead that, Stadium. That was the other coldest yeah. game I've ever been to in my life. The, the plus side that was, was I could have some slightly different beverages than I could in '91, <laughs> so I didn't feel it quite as much by game time. So and, I thought our car was going to freeze up driving down there. Oh God! And and Nebraska did their best oh. to um you know take us out of the game immediately. Oh, if yes, I remember yeah. right, it was a like a backwards pass or something to purify and he dropped it. And I think we, which is sensible in that kind of way. I think we gave, yeah, yeah, I think we gave him like the points right away off of that. If I, if I recall right. And um, you know, that was, that was just, that was a rough error there, but we get through the Callahan era. He gets fired after uh, 2007 and in 2008, and nine, we're going to play him again. And now it's with Bo. And uh, that's, I went down there. Well, we all went down there. We took the RV trip. It was about, uh, and uh, Mac was on it with us and, and uh, we we go down there and um, didn't think we were going to win it by any means. But holy smokes, I mean, we had barely sat down. Your brother, in fact, didn't even have a, he went to the um, concession stand before the kickoff. And he and he got to his seats with about nine minutes left. And we were down 21 nothing already. And he's like, what in the world happened? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's that bad. And eventually got down 35 nothing. And then, you know, the, <laughs> made the score somewhat respectable by the end. It was like 62 to 30 or something like that. But what I remember is Husker fans, we were five and four at that point. And Husker fans, us included, we go down to the southwest corner of the stadium and we clap as the team goes into the uh, to the locker room, right? We, we clap there. And I kind of walked around and I looked down the hallway, the long hallway there, um, and I see Barney Cotton from the side. And, you know, here's a former Husker player and everything. And he's got his, his head up against his arm, up against the wall. And he's just kind of, he's having a quiet moment you know, in this concourse. And, and I'm just thinking that's, you know, that's, that's, this meant a lot to him, it, it, you know, and it, I mean, it hurts and everything and it's Oklahoma, but it means a lot to the guy. And I was really proud how that team turned around and came back and won four straight games to go nine and four. And, and, you know, no one wants to give Bo the credit for winning nine and 10 games a season. And Bo had his demons and bad things, but, but there were good things too. And, and how they came back from that, uh, you know, I thought led a lot. And then, and then after that game, in fact, what, what happens, what people forget about that game, it was so strange to be there because we were not the, the main game of the night. What was happening in, in Lubbock with Texas Tech and Texas mm-hmm. was the bigger deal. Uh, that's the, the Michael Crabtree night catching it, you know, in Texas. Oklahoma needed Texas to lose to Texas Tech. And so we were this afterthought because we're getting blown out. It was so strange. But we talked with these really cool Oklahoma fans, great fans. We talked with them after the game. And they were like consoling us and saying, hey, we were there in the 90s. We understand you, know, you guys will get it back. And Mac and I were like, hell yeah, we'll get it back. I mean, we could beat you guys next year. And they were like, ah, oh, you know, you're crazy. Well, next season, 2009, first time in the Stoops era, they didn't score a touchdown. 
and uh, Nebraska did uh, did get their their uh, revenge, I guess that that next season. But that's the last one that we've had against them. We would play them in the final game of uh, the Big uh, Twelve for us, at least the 2010 game. Here, I'm going to show this clip here. It's so fitting that the final championship game features two rivals connected across time. He's all the way home! Across borders, before the Republic was even formed. But territory is still turf, home soil, and the schools that stand on it are symbols of the proud states they serve. So when these teams meet, there's more than a game on the line. Even when the Big 12 title is at stake like today. No, this one is about legacies and long-held grudges. This is Exhibit A for rivalry, for what the word truly means. This is Oklahoma versus Nebraska, the land, the people, and their teams. Mike, what does that make you feel like? I mean, this that that is the end of it officially, not yeah. just the not just the 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 two you know two games on and off. It's over. Yeah, yeah, that's a. Uh... That was a sad, sad deal for me. And, you know, it, that, the fact that they played last year and they're going to play this year, to me, it's not the same thing. It's just, you know, it's it's something it's something entirely different from what that was, um, to my way of thinking. Um, because, they, you know, being part of the same conference and, and all those years and how they got in the same conference going clear back and, uh, it just, I don't know. I, it was, it was a sad moment when Nebraska went to the big 10 and, and left Oklahoma and now Oklahoma and Texas are going to the sec. And, um, it just becomes more and more distance uh, yeah, this, between those programs. But, you know, there was a time, like I said, that was my favorite place to go for, for road mm-hmm. games because that's what I grew up with. Norman, Oklahoma was, was the place and everybody was so cordial down there and you knew people and, um, mm-hmm. you know, it just isn't the same. And, and, uh, 2010, that was, that was kind of the end of it, but it, you know, it, it had changed by then anyway, but, but uh, not in my mind until the, till the real end came. 